When you go to make a game, the first thing you're going to do is draw something to the screen. Maybe it's a circle, maybe it's a square, maybe it's a line. But that shape is powerful, because to you, that shape is already something. Maybe it's part of an animal. Maybe it's part of a puzzle. Maybe it's the ball in some sort of futuristic sport. Regardless, it's your job to fill in the gaps. You have to take that shape and make it into something fun, make it into something people feel. If this shape is an item, people need to understand why it's valuable. If it's a person, they need to understand why that character is doing what they're doing. As you figure this out, it becomes more real, more tangible, and it compresses into one component of your game. And as soon as that part is solidified, the rest of the elements start to emerge. You end up with a universe of components, related elements, characters, places, and over time this builds and builds. Each of these million elements you decided on is made of a thousand decisions that you made. While you're doing this, you're thinking about how can I make this fun and how can I make it engaging, but the thing you can't escape is that you are crafting the world you want, the characters you believe in. When I do this and I follow what is true to me and I make the decisions that feel sincere in my head and in my heart, I end up with the Lost Oinkers of Cowboy Isle. with me for a second. Let me take you back, way back. You're a kid playing games and you think, man, it would be really great to make my own game. Back in the day, compared to now, games were relatively simple, but making them was still very hard. Over the years, we got better tools, which let us make more impressive games, but the expectations of those games raised with it. So it never really became that much more approachable to make your own game. That is, until our boy Zep comes along. And he thinks, what if we take the old, simple games, the restrictive environment where you only have so many colors, you can only have such a big program. We take that, we mix it with a newer programming language, with a more understandable API. And that's exactly what he made when he made the Pico 8. And oh boy, did he do something. The Pico 8 is a fantasy console. It's like an emulator for a device that never existed. It's like an old operating system if those old operating systems were as fun as we remember them being. The idea is you can boot up the Pico 8 and you can lose yourself creating inside of it. You can draw the art for your game. You can make the music, the sound effects. You can program your game all in this little pixely window. Broadly speaking, nobody sells their Pico 8 games. People just make the games, they put them up on the forum, and other people enjoy them. It's just a way to express yourself and make the thing you want to make and have a good time doing it. And that's why it's perfect for a project like The Lost Oinkers, because this whole adventure is small. This game is like 20 minutes long. We don't need a fancy game engine. We don't need any fancy tools. We just need the Pico 8 to get some pixels on the screen and do it in a fun way. So let's actually talk about the game. Oinkers is a top-down adventure game, like Legend of Zelda, but without the combat and a lot simpler. The first big thing to decide was the theme of the game. And I decided, hey, I like cowboys. I like islands. I like animals. Put those all together, that's what's gonna make the core of this game. I decided I just wanted it to be about the cowboy going, finding people, talking to them, finding items, and kind of just exploring this whimsical world. Once I decided on those themes, the next question was what is the spine of the game? What is that core progression that actually like is the game? And I decided finding his lost pigs would be a fun, you know, backbone to these puzzles. And then I could start building out the world around that. Aside from world building, this is the point where you start thinking about the other fundamental elements of your game. Like for example, can the player die? If they die, can they respawn? If you die enough times, can you lose? These are all decisions that you have to make that end up influencing the design of the whole world. Because I wanted this to just feel cozy, I decided that you can't really lose. Anything you can do will be fine, but it just might not progress you towards the goal of finding all the pigs. 
but we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to when we were just making our guy move from the beginning. This is kind of the problem. You have to know where you're going in order to build something, but as soon as you start thinking about that, you forget that you haven't even made like the ability to pick up items yet. Once we have those elements though, we can get into building the world and making it start to feel like a thing that exists and not just pixels on the screen. The design of the world is going to depend a lot on the puzzles that are within it. So let's take a moment and talk about what I mean when I say a puzzle. Around the time I designed Oinkers, I was playing a lot of point and click adventure games. I played Full Throttle, the new Monkey Island, and I was really enjoying those types of puzzles. So that's kind of what I took inspiration for, for Oinkers. So you can imagine a puzzle is something like you walk up to a character, they say, oh, the garden is closed down. I wish I could smell my favorite flower. You have to find a way to find that flower for them. Them. And when you do, you either unlock a new section of the world, or you unlock a new item, or some information that is helpful to you, but in some way it progresses you onto solving the next puzzle. Some of these puzzles going in, I had a pretty good idea of what they were going to be, but some of them I had to kind of discover. As I'm going and building out this world, you're like, alright, it makes logical sense for there to be this type of area, or this type of item. And each time you solidify one of these elements, you then get more answers about what the rest of the world should feel like. And you can kind of just go step by step, trying to be consistent with what you just made and as you do that each next step becomes easier because you can look at the rest of the world and say is this consistent does this make sense to actually get this world we're designing onto the screen we have to draw something oinkers has about 96 8 by 8 sprites that get reused and end up making up the whole world one of the nice things about the pico 8 is that because it has a limited color palette you have to be creative but you're also limited, so at some point you have to say, well, I don't have the perfect color, I can't get the effect I want, I gotta just go with it. It looks close enough to a pig. Uh, kinda. The other big element to figure out is music, and if you've watched my previous videos, you know I am not musically inclined. But I didn't used to be artistically inclined either. About five years ago I made the decision to go and learn to draw so I can draw cool things that I really love, like the stickers that are in my shop right now. If you want to support the channel, if you like what I've been putting out, consider picking up a sticker. I would really love to be able to do this full time and every sticker purchase makes a big difference. But anyway, my point is that music is not something I'm capable of, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to try to do it for my game. I'm going to do it and we're going to learn and every time I do it we're going to get a little better and eventually I'll be able to say the same thing about music that I say now about art, which is that five years ago I sucked, but we got there. So I composed two tracks for this, both inside of the Pico 8. One is the opening title song, that sounds like... And the other one is the main game song, that sounds like... And next time we'll do better, you know, we keep practicing. But hey, it fills the noise of the game, you hear a song, and you only gotta listen to it for like 15, 20 minutes anyway, it's a short game, so, you know, how bad could it be? Now, I'd love to talk about the specifics of the game and go into some of the puzzles and things like that, but in the spirit of hashtag no spoilers, I think we're gonna stop it here. But don't worry, we have some stuff to build in real life, thanks to our sponsor, PCBWay. If you're not familiar, PCBWay is a company that can do on-demand PCB manufacturing, 3D printing. They basically power the maker community in my eyes. In fact, I used them for one of my last builds. If you're just getting into this type of project, don't worry. Their YouTube channel has a bunch of educational resources, and their site has a shared projects area where people can share the things they've built, and you can either learn from those projects or just order exactly what someone else made and use it in your project. And one of those shared projects was actually that important component I used for my game work build a couple videos ago. I've really enjoyed working with them. It's always great when someone who you already were using wants to sponsor your content. So go check out PCBWay and give them some love for making this video possible. But anyway, they were nice enough to send over this yellow version of the PCB for my game cartridge, so I want to make a special cartridge for Oinkers. So we can take that PCB along with the 3D printed part, which they also did, and combine those to make a really cool, unique looking cartridge. So let's do it with a montage. Uh, building cartridge montage. Uh, what? Screwing it in. Uh, printing it out. Got a label. Yeah. Making a cartridge, gotta cut it right sized, yeah. It's a sticker, wow. Gotta stick it down. Now we're done. <laughs> Thanks, PCBWay. Anyway, with that done, uh, all we have to do is load it up and actually play this cartridge. 
so I'll do that. But if you want to play this game, don't worry. I'm going to have a link in the description. You can go play it in your web browser or work on your phone, whatever you want to play it on. Enjoy. See you next time.